the thing is, is people need to understand that there. It, this is a very hard thing to achieve to be able to look a client in the eye and say, "This is your price, okay?" And we will not deviate from this. And so, to be able to give people a guarantee, in like especially through COVID and even now, this is an, it's uncertainty in the marketplace still. People are anticipating rate drops. People are anticipating all these different things. And in construction, I mean, we're day one. Like, you know, you you have an event take place, you know, unprecedented. Like, it could be war. It could be, uh, an, you know, like a COVID outbreak, something like that. Immediately, goods go through through the roof, right? And so it, it's a, there's a lot of, you know, having to monitor the market and understand what's coming and a lot of conversations between us and suppliers to be able to have a very good indication of, what we can get materials for, and then to take all that and put all that hard work up front, um, that makes us a little bit different because again, we're not in a in a scarcity mindset where we're just trying our best to get deposits from people. Um, how many how many times you know are you slowing down clients and saying, hey hey hey, before we sign papers, let's make sure this is a fit, um, and that's kind of that onboarding model that we we do all the time. But there's an internal conflict all the time. Sales constantly is coming to the table going, here are all the hurdles for my clients. And so then we look at it internally and it's like a, a war is happening behind the scenes to make sure that we can deliver a, a price that we feel like is the market standard or what people are expecting. Um, and what does that include and how we can do this and how we can navigate that? Because, you know, like I say, the biggest, the biggest ups, you know, point of contention is in production. You know, and we've made leaps and bounds improvements in our ability to build. And a lot of those challenges were going from building a couple of homes to building hundreds of homes at one time that anybody's going to have ridiculous uphill battles inside of that. But being in part in part of the sales side of that, like talk about that a little bit. Like you have a conversation with a with a client and your objective is not to get them to commit to building a barn door that day. Your objective is honestly to convince them otherwise, because you want them if they're going to come in and do this, you want them to, to have all the information. And so when they sign on the dotted line, it, there's a very clear expectation of what we've got, what we can deliver, what they're to receive, a timeline in which we can do it, you know, and, and how all that works. And then you get a lot of feedback from the clients of like, you know, all the things they're unhappy about, you know. And then at the end, we get a lot of re like, this was great. Thank you so much. You know, mm -hmm. but in the beginning, you don't ever hear that. It's, right. Here's my problem. This is a problem. Here's my other problem. And so, like, talk about a little bit of how you navigate that as a sales agent, and especially being, like, one of the top producers because you have a huge book of business that you're managing so many people. And and some of the things we've done to safeguard against that because, you know, also to, to your own downfall, being so good on the phone, you can have too many clients. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's such a delicate balance in workload and all that. So talk a little bit about that, like, when you – a client gets on your calendar, right? And you're going to call them. Walk like just walk through that first phone call from your perspective of how you navigate them through the process to get them to a point where they're signing a contract. Right. So when they schedule that initial call on my calendar, it's a discovery call. We're just looking to cover general information with them, get an idea of their current land situation what they're looking for plan-wise, do they have a budget in mind, um, and then really just covering any general questions that they have about the process. So a lot of people come in, they've been a part of the Barndo Facebook groups, they've chatted with their buddy, they've talked to the lender, and the lender tells them it's difficult to get financing. So they come in with a lot of hesitation because they see us producing all these Barndos if they follow us on social media, and they're wondering, how do we do this? Everybody's telling us no, everybody's telling us this is a bad idea, you need to tell us why it's a good idea. And so I don't really come at it from a point of I need to convince you, but I'm just going to give you the information. And then you need to make a decision for yourself as the adult here. So we go through general information. Um, I usually chat with them about pricing, of course, budget. Um, and one thing for me is really trying to wrangle budget on the front end. So I'm very upfront with my clients or potential clients about what's going to fit within their budget, not designing to their max budget, leaving some wiggle room because everybody wants an upgrade. Um, it may be one, it may be 10, but somebody somewhere, you want that upgrade, you want the tile shower, 
Um, you want the backsplash. You want those things. And if you don't leave that wiggle room, you're designing at the very top of your budget. You're not going to have that space. You're going to get sticker shock. So budget's a big thing for me on the front end is wrangling that before you sign your contract. Um, and I'll even double down with them before they onboard and just say, hey, let's just revisit the numbers, make sure we're all on the same page before you pay this money to onboard, before we start designing. Uh, because I've definitely had clients who, um, a couple clients that I'm working through right now, one's in finance um, and one's cash, and they were my first two clients to ever onboard. And they walked through our process the first time. Um, and, you know, things changed so much during those early months that I was here. And they ended up walking away. They were like, you know what, we're going to revisit this. Um, we just don't think this is the right time for us. They came back. They've gone through our process a second time now. Uh, and, and now they've gone through. You know, they've done finance. They, they've sent us the cash deposit. And they're ready to build with us. And I think that does speak to um, not only our process and our culture as a company because they are willing to revisit with us, um, but also, you know, they're they're also committed. And the client has to be committed as well to the process. Um, so just walking them through this, you know, it's some things we can negotiate on. Um, you have that softer conversation with them. And some things are a bit more direct. It's like, this is just how it is. And you either have to agree with it, this is our build process, or go elsewhere. Um, and, and sometimes that's a hard conversation to have because some clients are looking for something so specific to them that there's not really going to be many builders out there unless they're a highly custom builder, you know, that's 250 plus per square foot, that's going to get them there. Um, and it's really hard to wrangle their vision and just tell them, hey, we're looking to get you a base canvas. And from there, you make it your own. Um, and I think that's hard for some clients to understand is we're not looking to build. Sometimes we're building you the dream house. Absolutely. Um, but sometimes we're getting you that base canvas and you're going to make it your own and add your touches. And that's going to be your dream house. So um, I think with clients and just walking them through, it's you do have to meet them where they are, um, but you also have to be very direct with certain things and just tell them this is our policy. You know, this is what we do and this is how we build. And, you know, if this doesn't fit, then maybe we need to revisit. Maybe we need to have further conversations, um, but you can't bend on everything. Right. Yeah. But I think that builds confidence. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, well, it should. And, and again, it goes back to we operate out of abundance. We tell people on the front end. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're going to get you all this information. Go shop other builders, mm -hmm. you know, and you, 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 you spoke to it. You had people that left because they're like, we'll find what we're looking for. Yep. And then six, eight months later, where are they? They're, they're back at the table having a conversation because what they realize is there's really no one is going to give all these things away. Just, we end up having that direct conversation kind of day one in the first week mm -hmm. where other builders, it might take to the back end of the process where they have that conversation. It's not to say we're perfect, but we're trying to be, right. okay? And so, um, you know, it, it, you just kind of provide people facts, mm -hmm. right? Facts, not feelings. This is this is it. And then we process their feedback the same way. What are the facts? Because people get unhinged, right, when they get upset about something. And you can't take this complaint and, and provide a solution. You're not going to solve their feelings. Right. But you can solve the facts. And so if the fact is that this is a material fact, that this is a problem, we can fix that. Mm -hmm. And we've done that. We're continuously improving and trying to get there, you know, every single step of the way. Every client makes us a better builder for the next client. And that's just the way it's always going to be. Thanks, guys, for tuning in to the Barndo Show podcast. If you're watching on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this content, uh, hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And then be sure to check us out on all of our social media platforms at The Barndo Co. Super simple to find us. And then when you're ready to dive in a little more, maybe look around some of our available floor plan options or take a look at the gallery of our work, or maybe you're ready to connect with our team and explore what it looks like to build your dream barndominium, you can visit us online at thebarndoco.com.